I've spent uh, 20 years uh, in an industry in sales uh, that I love. I've supplied wood, wood products, and other, other things that go along with that to small shops, large factories of folks who make things, furniture, cabinetry, skateboards, whatever it may be out of wood, I supplied somebody that did it, and I loved it. One day in a rural cabinet shop in our state, uh, I was on a sales call, and uh, that sales call made me question everything I did up to that point. I was uh, waiting on the shop owner to do our normal business. Uh, in walked an older gentleman with a large board, and out walked that gentleman. A couple minutes later, he walked back in. As we were both standing there, we were obviously waiting for the same, same shop owner to uh, discuss something. I asked him, I said, what are you doing with those large cedar boards? I obviously knew they were western or eastern red cedar. And he told me, uh, he said, I'm making a casket. I said, wow, that's cool. You know, I, I don't think anybody ever said that to me. And uh, he said, well, what's really cool is I'm making my own casket. So, of course, I was, I was hooked. I, I really didn't know what to say. I was, in my mind, I, I kind of was thinking, well, geez, is he going to use it soon? Or what? <laughs> so I, I didn't say anything. And uh, he began to tell me, he goes, you know, what's interesting is I planted that tree when I was six. He was a six-year-old boy, lived on a farm. His father and his uncle, one year in the spring, were pulling up cedar trees in a cow pasture. If you want a pasture, the first tree that will grow is usually a cedar. And if you want to keep it a pasture, you have to kind of pull them out. And so cedars come first, and then pine trees, and then hardwoods. That's just decades of the cycle of forests. So uh, he, he, his uncle saw that he was disturbed by all these cedar trees on the ground and said, go plant it, it'll grow. So he went to his grandmother's house, and he planted the tree. Uh, that house later became his parents' house and, and then later became his house. So that day when I met him, he was 76. Uh, he had to cut down the tree because it was encroaching on the house. It was old and cedars tend to blow down quite easily when they're that old. And he was a woodworker, so he said, well, geez, I'll make a casket. Then my wife won't spend all of our savings on some overpriced casket when I, when I go. I was intrigued, I was, I, I was blown away, really. I just, uh, I thought it was the best use, best full cycle use of a natural resource th that I'd ever seen, and especially in a career of wood. I, I supplied a number, of mount uh, a number of trees and a number of forms to thousands of people over 20 years. So I left that day, I left that sales call and I had a couple hour drive home and all I could think to myself was, where's my tree? What have I planted? So I got back home. I live in Charlotte. And I just couldn't. I was obsessed. I said, well, geez, I, I moved to Charlotte. When I came here and visited, I moved to Charlotte because of this tree canopy that I saw. I was in love with it. It was just beautiful. Everybody knows that. It's a, it's a spectacular city. We have spectacular trees. And I started questioning where do our trees grow or go when, when they're not living anymore? Who planted them? Did they have an intention when they planted them? Did they ever think that when the living usefulness of that tree was done, it would ever have a material usefulness? So I, I researched, I talked to tree companies in the city, in the county, builders, developers. What I learned was in this greater Charlotte area, we throw away about 40,000 pounds of trees a day that are usable. That's 800,000 pounds a month. Of course, that's a five working day calculation. That's over 9 million pounds of trees a year. I, again, I was just blown away by this, and I said, what, what can I do to, you know, I know people who buy wood. That's what I've done. What can I do to use some of these trees, make some good wood, keep it out of the dump, etc.? So I bought a sawmill, uh, not a sawmill with hundreds of employees or 
like that, but it's a portable sawmill. You pull it behind a truck. It was cool. You know, I, I like to do it. I cut big trees and little trees and made boards and lumber and different things, and, and people were buying it. They, they liked it. And everybody I shared the idea with of repurposing trees, everybody liked it. So I, I kept cutting and kept cutting and kept cutting. I, I kept a flat, and I had a job, mind you. I, I had a full-time career. I had a, kept a flag in my car. I mean, every time somebody was cutting down one of these monster, beautiful trees, I'd stop and ask them what they were doing with it. Oh, we're just going to take it to the dump. Okay, bring it over here. I'll, I'll do something else with it. You know, a couple months went by, and I learned I can't cut 40,000 pounds of trees a day. <laughs> They're heavy. Uh, it takes a, it, it just can't do it. It's uh, physically impossible. So I, I was at a crossroads. I could probably quit my career, which I love, I thought I loved, and keep cutting trees and making wood and, and uh, go on about my life. Or, you know, I had this skill set of sales and marketing and management and talking. That was my skill set. This is what I like to do. So I decided instead of to just continue to cut some trees, I created Tree Cycle America. And what Tree Cycle America is, is a collaborative network of architects and designers, sawmills, woodworkers, artisans, and, and even the growers that grow the original saplings and the planters here in Charlotte who plant trees, all embracing the common goal of utilizing a tree to its fullest potential. That way, we can not only my sawmill, we can get other sawmills involved and all these woodworkers involved and maybe we can lessen this waste burden that we have. Right now in Charlotte, in the past few years, this group of businesses have created unbelievable bars at local breweries in the south side of town. Unbelievable tables at breweries in the Noda region. Different woodworkers have made some uh, new paneling and conference tables for Allison's uh, remodeled office space uh, at her company on the 16th floor downtown. We have woodworkers making cutting boards, garden boxes, chicken coops, molding for houses, mantles, anything you can think of that's made from wood. We're doing it right now with Charlotte trees that otherwise would go in the dump. I'm happy, and, I, and we're just beginning. So the, the thing that we, we wanted to do that I think is unique is we wanted to put a label on this. We wanted to put a brand on it. We wanted to make it special. So the way we did that, we came up with this tree ID tracking system. So now one of these businesses who remove trees, their job in the equation is to take a picture. That'll give us GPS coordinates when it came down. We know who took it down. What species is it and why? So we need five bits of information so we understand where that tree came from. And it, it's important, and it's important for, for some reasons I'll share. The, the tree ID system, we can look back up any piece of wood that goes to a sawmill, eventually to a woodworker, eventually to a homeowner. We can track back, like my belt buckle has a number on it. I know where that tree grew in Charlotte, and I know it, that tree didn't go to the dump. It made a thousand belt buckles. That was pretty cool. Where the tree ID is most important, we feel, is the future of urban forestry, because that's really what we're about. What is our city going to look like 25, 30 years from now when we have another million and a half and two million people? Are we going to have trees? Or are we going to look like Damascus? It's not a pretty sight when we don't think about these trees and the importance of them. So the tree ID tracking system will be there for us to intentionally plant a tree on Park Road or Queens Road West or all these great places that we have trees. We plant a tree with the intention that one day we don't put metal in it, we don't staple fences to it, we don't have gunshots anymore in the city, hopefully. We don't put things in the tree that would cause it to be waste later when it's when it's not living anymore. We intentionally plant a tree, the right tree, the right species, 
So one day we can use it right here. It doesn't have to move. It creates a great economic engine and it alleviates our waste, which that waste, by the way, lets off CO2 that it stored for 100 years while the tree grew. So as we push it into the landfill, you know, that, that's a negative that happens with that. The, you know, there are cultures and countries out there that don't throw away trees. They're either smart or they don't have the luxury to do so. Last year, we threw away 9 million pounds. We've got to change that. Can you imagine Charlotte being that model city to show this change to the rest of our country and our culture? I can. Thank you.